Welcome back to Culture Vultures, where we're talking about black poets who have made history. It's part of our Black History Month series of the show. Now, we are in this wonderful surrounding. It's the culture space, and we're in Canada Water, South East London. With me, telling us about the poets he feels should be recognised is poet and lawyer David Nita. So, David, let's just recap. So, in yes. the first half, we spoke yes. about your favourite poet, right. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. That's right. Who is also Maya Angelou's favourite poet, and That's you right. named mentioned her to be one of your great uh, a great poet as well that's right and you finished off with a little bit of a surprise in, in talking about bob marley that's right so we're looking for some more surprises actually for this second bit here okay. um but we're going to kick off with someone who we do know as yes. a poet louise bennett louise bennett otherwise louise bennett coverly uh fondly known as miss lou <laughs> um she inspired a generation um and continues to s inspire future generations, and she, she, set, uh, she set the tone of integrity and dignity uh, for the psyche of an entire population. So she burst on our screens in Jamaica with her program Ring Ding, for example, for example and other programs. And um, she did something that very she did something that was just so admirable. She made Jamaican language and culture something of absolute great value. Mm. You know, she took patois, people refer to as patois, and made it um, a language that was just so desirable. Mm. She spoke it in such a beautiful way and, and, and she brought integrity to it. You have to remember that in during these times, you would have uh, um, parents saying to their children, don't speak that, don't speak yeah. patois. You know, don't speak like that. You're speaking mm. broken English. Yeah, they say speak properly. Speak, speak properly. And Louise would say, don't tell the children that. Tell them to speak English properly and tell them to speak the Jamaican vernacular properly. Yeah. Because it's not that one is the improper version of the other. Mm -hmm. It is that there are two separate and distinct languages. And when people challenged her and said, well, it's not a language, it's derived from English and other African languages. She said, well, if that's the case, then English is not a proper language then. That's also derived from yes. Latin and Norman and all these yeah. languages. So she brought a sense of dignity. And, and, and because of Louise Bennett, you had you know, people now looking at the language in a different way and now interpreting and reinterpreting texts. Even the Bible yeah. is now interpreted in the Jamaican vernacular. And so when people from Jamaica and students, what she did for us is that when we were writing application forms and we we're going, you know, trying to get jobs and going to university, uh, we, can, we can say we are multilingual, we are bilingual, we are multilingual because we speak in English and we speak the Jamaican vernacular and also other languages yes. which we learn back, uh, 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 in Jamaica. So, so she was very powerful in that sense. And also, she was a consummate professional. It, she wasn't just a performer, but she wanted to give you some background beh behind what she was performing. So she, and, and she was an amazing folklorist. And when she did, um, um, you, know, you know, Jamaican songs like Long Time Girl Me Never See You, she would explain it. Mm -hmm. She would explain it. So she would say, peel it, drunk, or sit down pan treat or pick out the blossom. I hear people say, you just sing that and you don't know the meaning, but she'd give you the meaning behind it because drunk, which is, a uh, carrion crow, which is the uh, buzzard, if people might recognize that. What do they eat? Dead, you know, dead animals yeah, and so on. Yeah. So when they eat a blossom, that's a strange yeah, thing. Yeah. That's, that's a long time I haven't seen mm -hmm. it. She's compared, comparing it. It's, it's like a metaphor. So we're learning all sorts of physical figures of speech mm -hmm. uh, when we're listening to Louis Bennett. And also we're learning it with pride. And also we're learning it with love. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you know, students went to school. I mean, the one thing about Jamaican education, and Louise Bennett contributed to this, is that learning was fun. Mm -hmm. She made learning fun. You, you were like in an environment where learning was a part of nutrition that went straight to the brain mm -hmm. and saturated your being. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Sort of thing. Well, absolutely. Brilliant. Okay. Louise Bennett, obviously, Louise Bennett. you know, very patriotic about being very patriotic. Jamaican. That's right. And to your fifth person, very patriotic about being Nigerian. What can we say about Ben Okri? I mean, we are sitting right here in the mm. culture hall, the culture space, where Ben Okri himself performed. Yeah. I was present at a performance. Ben performed in this, in this space. Most people, Ben Okri. I mean, award-winning. Mm. I mean, we, don't, we wouldn't have time to go through all the awards and the accolades. <laughs> um, but, you know, most people know Ben as a novelist. Yes. Uh, they know him as a novelist. But Ben also is a writer of short stories mm -hmm. and a story that will absolutely transform your life if you read it is The War Healer, I believe it's called, War Healer. Uh, amazing. But then you come to his poems. Uh, uh, it's just amazing. But, but uh, I just have to talk about one. Mm -hmm. He wrote an epic poem called Mental Fight. And it, it's, it's epic. It has to be, it's in a book. And everybody, it should be on the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Talk about what we should ensure. The Minister of Education, the, 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 the Education Ministry is now grappling with what people should learn. And I have an easy quick win, low-lying fruit for you, a very accessible and beautiful book. It's called Mental Fire by Ben Okri. It should be on the curriculum mm. because here he addresses every sector of society. The, the, the political sector, for example, is called harmony of politics and heart. And most people today think of politics of, as having no heart. Mm. And here Ben introduces the heart into politics to make it work for all of us. I've actually turned that particular chapter in the book, the epic poem, into a film. So inspired I've been by Ben Okri. Um, and, and his writing is just so beautiful. It's, 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 it's something that keeps you reading. You know, you, you just, the words are magnetic. Mm -hmm. And the flow is, is really taken into a destiny of understanding. And, and I think that he should be compulsory reading, uh, not only in the United Kingdom, but, um, but, but all over the world. But, you know, we're noticing every single poet we've talked about in this series have all performed in the United yes. Kingdom. All of them. Yep, yep. Part of our black British history. Part of our black yep, British history. Absolutely. Okay. So your final poet, though. Now, this one's a bit of, a, <laughs> of an interesting one. <laughs> right, right. So I said we had more surprises. So yes. this is another surprise. <laughs> the, ne the next poet really has to be... I don't even know which camera to look in in the studio. But the next poet has to be you, the viewer. I hope we have said enough to convince you that poetry wants and needs to bond with everybody. It's, it's, you know, we really should ban anybody saying you're not a good poet or you can't write poetry or, or you know, or this is poetry and this is all it is. Mm. Poetry is free flowing. It, it, it allowed itself to be used by the psalmist David for very therapeutic purposes. When you read the Psalms, you see that David is working out his psychology. He's crying out to his creator, right? Mm -hmm. Save me, rescue me, deliver me from my enemies, and so on. He, he, he uses it as a prayer, you know? The Lord is my shepherd, and so on, so on. And then, and, then, and then he makes a statement through the ages, declaring for people the state of their aesthetic, beautiful, by saying, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And then he says, I know that full well. So he's constantly working out himself. This, this, this philosophical question, know thyself. The unexamined life is not worth thinking. David is working out through poetry. Mm. So poetry avails himself to David. It goes to his son Solomon, mm. who then uses it for a different reason, for, Rome, for, for, for love. So you get the songs of Solomon, yes. some of the most beautiful love verses written. You know, but written. for our viewers who are now thinking, yes. well, hang on, a poet. So, yes. so what would I, how would I go about right. it? Right, okay, so, so let me do, wind do, it. do the verses have to rhyme? Right, and so the viewer is thinking, okay, but you're talking about these illustrious poets who yes. get, you know, canonized in, 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 in script, in script uh, and books. But you see, the greatest poem is yet to be written. And the greatest poet is yet to emerge. And they're sitting at home. And, and, and you see, 
poetry is part of what... Or in the studio. Or in the studio, <laughs> or in the studio, my dear. Or in this space. Uh, or in this space. <laughs> We're all over. And, 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 and I would just encourage, um, apart from going to check out the poems we've talked about, mm. really check yourself out. Because a, a lot of what we've been doing is to check out these great people. But the greatest person there is yourself. Mm -hmm. And to check that, per I've done it. It's, it's what made me who I am. Yeah. Poetry, writing poetry, engaging with poetry, producing volumes of poetry and books of poetry and performing all over the world. It, you know, but, but, but I'm not saying be a poet and only a poet. Mm -hmm. I'm saying whatever else you are, choose to be a poet too. Mm -hmm. Because, because it, will, it will increase the impact and the value you have on your community and the world. Mm -hmm. Super. David Nita, thank you so much for joining thank us you. on Culture Vultures. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, as always. Thank you, Rosemary. And thank you to you as well. Hope you had fun enjoying David talking about his favourite poets. And um, we'll see you another time to talk about more black creatives who have made history. See you soon.